Hi guys, my name is uh, Mr. Siwade. <clears throat> we are looking at the respiratory tract physiology. Okay, this is just part one. So we are basically looking at the physiological anatomy of the respiratory tract. We won't go into hardcore anatomy or hardcore embryology or histology. It's just a physiological um, features with, uh, I mean, anatomical features with physiological functions. So first thing first, what is the respiration? This is a process by which oxygen is taken in and carbon dioxide is given out. Every organism takes in oxygen, takes out carbon dioxide. Most of the organism, the mammals. Okay. This is a very important uh, phenomena. Sometimes we take it for granted. But it just shows that every part of the human body has been designed to depend on oxygen. Okay. Because oxygen is the source of energy. And that energy is ATP. And ATP drives many physiological processes even the way i'm talking the way you are writing the senses the perceptions all those are they use energy so the total being of a person of a person uses energy in form of uh, atp and the molecule that is capable of generating that atp is oxygen okay so the metabolic product of the of oxidation reactions within the body produces a waste product called carbon dioxide it's not really a waste plants would depend on carbon dioxide even our bodies they also depend on uh, carbon dioxide okay for example the synthesis of uh, purines depends on carbon dioxide we know purines they are very important in the dna okay the the structure of uh, they are important in nucleic acids so what the point is that even if carbon dioxide is a waste product it's not really wasted actually the design of the universe is nothing is wasted okay so the first breath takes place only after birth and then the uh, after birth, that's the first breath. That is interaction between the environment and the newborn. But although during the fetal development, the child depends on the mother's gases, okay, through the placenta. Now the the organs of the respiration uh, respiratory system. Although this diagram might not be clear but we have the left lung okay actually this is the right lung and this is the left lung okay and there is the airways that uh, the, these are conducting airways or conducting system that conducts air from the environment so air just enters through here down through the trachea and then device to various compartments and then it reaches the lungs okay the the lungs are balloon shaped structures we're going to see that they are balloon shaped structures and they are made up of uh, millions of alveoli okay the millions of alveoli and down there there's a diaphragm or we can say superior actually this is inferior inferior to the to the lungs there's a diaphragm it's a very tough muscular structure that does not get fatigue. Okay. From muscle physiology, we will remember that this does not undergo fatigue. It's always contracting, relaxing, contracting, relaxing, even during strenuous activities. Okay. The diaphragm is made up of these tough muscles. Okay. So these are the organs of the respiratory system. We have the nose there. We have the the mouth also is involved in uh, respiratory. That is gaseous exchange. 
or entry of air into the respiratory system, although the nose is not very effective because it doesn't moisturize, okay? It doesn't trap, doesn't filter the, the air as compared to the nose. Uh, uh, yeah, and as compared to the nose. Okay. Now, there are some important values that we need to know, which we call the normal respiratory rate. Remember, physiology is a study of uh, normal functions of structures in the body. And we know pathology looks at uh, deviation from this normal. So a good understanding of physiology makes us become good doctors. Okay. Because a newborn, for example, a newborn, the respiratory rate, that is the rate at which you breathe in and out. That's the meaning of respiratory rate. The rate at which you breathe in and out, breathe in and out. In a newborn is 30 to 60 per minute. So you make about, uh, it, the newborn makes about 30 to 60 breaths per minute. In the early childhood, okay, early childhood, that's about, uh, what can we say, five years, six years, seven years. It starts reducing 20 to 40 uh, breaths per minute. In the late childhood, 15 to 25 per minute. The adults, an adult like myself, the respiratory rate, it is 12 to 16. So in a normal healthy person, the respiratory rate should range from 12 to 16. Although in some books, uh, it, they even indicate 20 breath per minute okay that's not really a big deviation even if you measure a person with a uh, 18 breath per minute it's not really bad okay so during development of a person the respiratory rate reduces okay during development of a person the respiratory rate reduces until it stabilizes around 12 to about 18 breaths per minute. Okay, the major reason for this is due to changes in metabolic activities. Okay, what do we mean by metabolic activities? The body is always producing substances, okay, synthesizing substances, it's also breaking down substances. Okay, so those are metabolic activities which can be called, there is breaking down of a substance or chemical compounds is called catabolism. Okay. Building up of substance is called uh, anabolism, like synthesis of, of uh, fatty acids. It's an anabolic uh, reaction or synthesis of uh, nucleotides. Those are anabolic reaction. All those are metabolic reaction so that's why we are saying from the time the child is born until adult the respiratory rate reduces due to reduction in uh, in uh, basal metabolic rate okay so we are, what we are trying to say is that children the metabolism the rates because they are growing remember there's growth of bones cell division so generally the metabolic rate is high so there is a uh, demand for oxygen that's why the respiratory rate is uh, also high okay so we'll look at this later on but basically we are saying the respiratory the the centers that controls respiration which lie in the medulla oblongata they are stimulated in the newborn thereby increasing the respiratory rate Okay, now there are types of respiration. I'm sure you've heard of external respiration and internal respiration. So this table shows some of the differences. But external respiration, what should come into your mind is just uh, normal breathing. It occurs between the body and the external environment. Okay, but for internal respiration, it occurs at cellular level within the organism itself. So when air enters into our lungs from the environment, that is external respiration. But when air from the blood vessels, that is capillaries, 
enter into cells or the carbon dioxide from the cells goes into blood that is uh, internal respiration so it occurs at cellular level okay the other differences external respiration it is a mechanical process okay it's a mechanical process what do we mean by mechanical process the muscles of a, uh, of of respiration are involved the diaphragm the internal intercostal muscles the external intercostal muscles the the abdominal muscles the accessory muscles the stenocleidomastoid muscles they are involved it's a mechanical process okay mechanical like a physical process but for internal respiration it's a chemical process so this can even be written in a chemical equation whereby oxygen reacts with the uh, carbohydrates to form carbon dioxide energy and uh, water okay the other difference it can be both voluntary and involuntary action yes if you want you can hold your breath that is a voluntary uh, action but internal respiration it only it is involuntary we cannot control it with our will okay the other fourth difference is it can never occur in the absence of oxygen it can on occasion occur in the absence of oxygen okay it can occur in the absence of oxygen for example glycolysis glycolysis occurs without oxygen okay and can never occur in the absence of oxygen number five it is involved in gas exchange this one it does not involve gas exchange usually here there is a chemical reaction number six oxygen combines with hemoglobin to form oxyhemoglobin protons combine with oxygen to form water okay so these are some of the differences just have time to look at these differences and try to understand what we are trying to talk about so there's this diagram which shows uh, the partial pressures of uh, these two important gases that is oxygen and carbon dioxide okay the partial pressures of these important gases okay now look at this this is uh, it's the atmosphere let me see where's my pen i don't know where my pen is okay but you can see this is the atmospheric air the partial pressure of oxygen is about 159 remember partial pressure we're just talking about the concentration of oxygen okay the concentration of oxygen if we get about uh, a particular volume of air there's a fraction which is oxygen so that pressure is about 159 millimeters of mercury so what should come to your mind pressure is the same as concentration but the concentration of carbon dioxide is about 0 0.23 millimeters of mercury okay it's about 0 0.23 millimeters of mercury okay very important this should be known and then there's also a viola air now oxygen in the lungs the partial pressure is 104 millimeter but the carbon dioxide in the lungs it's 40 millimeters of mercury so we have more oxygen outside outside our bodies as compared to inside however we have more carbon dioxide in our bodies as compared to the atmosphere very important concept okay the other important concept which we need to know is the arterial blood because oxygen from the from the lungs enters into the arterial blood okay so oxygen in the arteries the partial pressure of oxygen in the arteries is 100 millimeters of mercury and the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is 40 millimeters of mercury okay these values which i'm giving are values of a normal healthy person okay these are no 